you watch any of my YouTube videos, you know that I love old Mercedes. There's just something about them being so refined, not packed with technologies. None of those electronic troubles that will just come out with these cars. And here we have the 1987 Mercedes-Benz 560 SEL W126 body, or more specifically, the V126, as it is the long wheel base one. And this one right here is the regular version. It's not an armored one. However, as you move on over here to the side, you can see that there's just a lot more where these came from. So there's one right here that is an armored one. This is a factory armored spec. And we go on more and there is another one right here it's also an armored one so these three are all 560 SELs and it's probably one of the best collections in the world but as you move on over here you get yet another one it's a 260 SE that's also armored but only lightly armored Let's start with the front of the 126. Now we're going to start with this non-armored version. It looks exactly identical to the rest. But you know, that's the thing about these old Mercedes. They're just very simple, very straightforward. You get a grill for airflow that looks really nice as well. You get your Mercedes 3 pointed star hood emblem. Then the thing about these uh, old headlamps is that they're not made out of uh, plastic. They're made out of real glass. So if dust and dirt do build up on them, you can use the small wiper to wipe it and it wouldn't scratch unlike plastic. Now as you move on over to the side, you can just see how elegant this car is. Now this is the SEL, the long wheelbase version, which means it has a wheelbase that is 5.5 inches longer than a standard wheelbase. So that just makes this car really, really long. It's only around two inches shorter than the really, really big S-Class, the W140 S-Class, even in long wheelbase form. And this car is just covered in this beautiful green paint. Now this has been repainted, but it is the original shade. And it is just perfect for this car. It looks so majestic. It reminds me of those uh, Rolls-Royce Phantoms in uh, Peninsula Hotel in Hong Kong. It just has that very, very similar shade to it. Probably a bit different, but quite similar. And now here to the rims. You get these 15-inch rims, which is perfect for a large sedan because it just exudes so much style and comfort as well without giving you any of that modern sporty car look that luxury sedans are not supposed to have in the first place. Now, if you ask someone to draw a car, like a kid from the 80s or even my generation, a kid from the late 90s, they would probably draw a hood, like a box for the passenger compartment and the trunk. And that's what the W123 is. However, if the kid wanted a bigger car, this is exactly what he would draw. A W126, you get your regular hood, you get a boxy design, although it is a bit longer. Note the size of these doors, given its long wheelbase. And then you get your trunk, which is very simple. And that's just, I think it's beautiful. You have the same story as the side here at the back. So it's a very, very basic design. It's just pretty much a box, so any kid can draw this as well. But then there's just those small touches that make it really nice. So a very 80s look, you get this uh, chrome accent on the bumper, you get this chrome strip as well. Three-pointed star, that's actually really, really big. That's almost, that's bigger than the size of my palm. You got a 560 SEL badge with an underline. Mercedes did that to cut costs, that way it's just one piece, they can easily stick it there, genius. And you have these tail lamps, which are ribbed. That way, snow, dust, dirt, and grime won't stick on it. It's a safety feature as well, just like the 124 and the 123. Now, to open this trunk up, you just press this button right here. And as you lift this up, the first thing you'll notice is that unlike modern cars, this part where the plate holder is, it doesn't go up with the trunk. So it just remains fixed in place like that. Now, that's good because uh, there's nothing to hit your head on it. But the issue there is that you get this incredibly high load lip. So loading luggages in there would be a bit hard. But anyway, as you open this up, do you see the attention to detail in Mercedes part? Do you see the color of the mats and the liners? It matches the exterior of the car, so it's green as well. And as you open this up, you get a full-size spare tire and your original 126 jack. That's something you barely get in cars nowadays, and that's just amazing. Fortunately, I don't see a warning triangle right here. There could be one, should you want to put one, and it's gonna be right here. Close this one up, and it has that uh, really nice thud to it which I'm a big fan of. So to open up the hood of the 560 SEL, first you have to open up the latch in, on the inside as usual, and then you lift this one up, this one comes out, then you pull this one up, and right here under the hood, before you do anything to the engine, because you have this grill that's gonna hit your head, Mercedes had the mechanic in mind. 
So first, you come over to the passenger side. There's this latch here that you have to pull. Once that's down, you move on over to the driver's side. Usually you just need one person to do this, but it's way easier with two people. So now I just pull this down as well. And this one goes up to a full 90 degrees, which at this point you can now see this magnificent M117 naturally aspirated V8 engine. That's 5.5 liters. So just like today, Mercedes-Benz has been lying to us with the 560 name. It's just a 5.5 liter. Anyway, this engine produces 300 horsepower and 455 newton meters of torque, making this the fastest large sedan of its time, at least until the E32 750 IL came out. And this goes from zero to 100 kilometers in only 6.9 seconds, which is very, very nice up to a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Now, some cool things about this is that you get this resistor right here that has been modified so that it's gonna be easier to reach when the aux fan acts up. So usually that's down there, but the owner had it modified up here. Then you also have this uh, fuel line thing that apparently according to the owner, the fuel is cooled. So it's also connected to the compressor, which then feeds it to the engine. That doesn't make sense to me, but it's just very, very cool to know that. And you also get this uh, hood pad, which is aftermarket, because most of the hood pads in these cars, they tend to like crumble. So you get this uh, really nice uh, heat insulating hood pad thing. Very nice. Inside the 560 SEL, first let's check the thud of the door. Have you ever been in a bank vault? Well, that's pretty much how this door sounds. It's just the most solid door thud I've ever heard in my entire life. And I've reviewed a lot of cars so far. So anyway, let's check the... Uh, Engine, does it fire well? This car is almost like 40 years old. It fries right up like that, that's amazing. Now let's turn on the AC. Now in here in the cabin, it's a very 80s design. So it's very, very simple all over. So your dash, like it's not exactly soft touch, but you know it's high quality. Here on the side too, the door cards. And as you notice here in the door cards, you get this uh, switches, right? So. It has power seats all the way in a lot of ways. Let you see that. And you also have this thing to raise the headrest. So now the headrest switch is separate from the rest of the seats because when this car first came out, it didn't have the headrest control. But later on when they had it, they just decided to put it here because they don't have a space anymore up top. Now here too, you get this wood trim all over and it's very nice. It's in great shape actually. You get power windows for all four. The steering wheel too, it's covered in this wood. It has a driver's airbag. This one being an 87 model, it didn't have the passenger airbag as standard yet. That was an option for this year. Then your gauge cluster too, it's very, uh, your very conventional gauge cluster. So you actually get a clock here, which looks very, very tiny. You get an RPM gauge, red lines around 6,000 RPM. But what's interesting to note is that most of the time, RPM is like revs per minute in thousands, right? So it goes like, one, two, three, four, five, I mean, 10, oh yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, then just multiply it by like uh, 100. But for this one, it goes like 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, times 100, one per minute, which is very interesting. This car only has 110,000 kilometers on it, which is very, very fresh. Now, what else in here? So here in the center, you get these air vents, right? and on the side you get air vents too but there's no way to turn off the air vents on the side aha uh -huh, there is so you move this uh, lever right here and it shuts off the driver's side air vent move this one for the passenger side air vent and you move the center run to turn off the air vent in the center which is very very cool both of them at the same time you have the switch right here that turns on the dome light at the back then you have this really weird uh, primitive climate control switch so you have a knob for your uh, temperature controls and you get this like whack-a-mole thing with EC being no compressor and this one with your compressor on and you have this recirculate button it's just a very very odd thing but it's very cool it's just something we don't see in cars anymore nowadays now you have the shifter it's all wooden as well you can go all the way to like two and down to one it's a four-speed automatic you also get heated seats two-way heated seats so you want it a bit warm or very warm now here you get the, this rear switch right here. 
which is actually for the audio controls. I don't know why Mercedes put that, but it's very interesting. So if you move this to the back, that's your audio fade. So it moves all the sound to the back. And if you move it forward, it moves all the fade to the front, which is a very, very weird again. Now up top, you get the sun visor right here with the mirror and lights. And you get another visor for the middle to cover the sun that these two can cover. And what's very interesting with this car is that for your seat belt warning thing, you don't get a buzzer, you don't get any of that, but you do get this thing right here that looks like it's from an aircraft to buckle your seat belts. So it also comes with a sunroof. It doesn't have glass though. So the entire thing just slides forward, but uh, it doesn't seem to work right now. And finally, I want to show you this uh, armrest which is bolted onto the seats. So if I lift this up, and if I move the seats, note how like it moves together with the seats. It's very cool. Also one thing to point out here is just how thick the padding is on this uh, mat. The noise insulation this provides is amazing. Here at the back, let's check the thud of the door. Again, it's a very, very bank vault like sound. Now here at the back, these seats are very 80s, very Mercedes. So they're incredibly soft and springy like newer cars, which is a bit of an odd feeling today because most seats today are firm. You get this really nice headrest, which you can adjust. It's covered in, in supple leather, very, very supple leather as well. You get this armrest, no cup holders, none of that. So it's also very padded. It's also very springy and cushy feeling, just like your living room sofa. Now over here, since it is a long wheelbase model, you get tons of legroom. This is seated behind my driving position, although I am 5'6", but I'm telling you, even if you're like six feet tall, this is no problem at all. You also get this uh, footrest right here, which you can easily just like rest your feet there. And it's also covered in the same color as the rest of the interior and the rest of the car. Now here at the side, you get more wood trim, same type of material as the front. You get the power windows, you get the heated seats for the back, which is again, really cool. And you also get the power adjustable rear seats. So the entire bench moves forward and backwards. However, it doesn't seem to work right now. You get this really, really long door, the grab handle, which is around the size of the door as well, which is pretty cool because usually it's only around half the size in most cars. Yeah, it's really for the door. It's definitely for the door. Now, if you sit here in the middle, you do have a transmission tunnel. Although it is high, it's not very wide. So it's quite narrow. It's one of the most narrow transmission tunnels I've ever seen in a car. So that plus really, really wide car means that you can see three people abreast here, no problem. Although that's not the intended design, you can should you want to. Now the best thing about this car, if you're seated in the middle, you get this beautiful unobstructed hood. See that view? You get to see the three-point star in all its magnificent glory as you're chauffeured around in your Mercedes-Benz S-Class. So driving the 1987 Mercedes-Benz 560 SEL. Now this is the non-armored version. So the first thing you'll notice when you drive this car is just how smooth and isolated you are from the outside world. It's just not like any other modern car that I've driven. If you drove the W140, yes, there's that sense of isolation. It's probably a bit more isolated, that car, but there's just something about this car. Now, the W140 feels very, very wide, hence you feel so detached from everything else. Everything's just so far from you. Now, this car isn't as wide as that, yet it gives you that same sense of isolation, which is very, very amazing. Now, this being the top spec 560 SEL, you have that immense 300 horsepower 5.5 liter v8 under your disposal and as i shall now demonstrate by flooring this car that is smooth that is incredibly smooth the brakes too are pretty great on this one now the car isn't exactly fast it's not especially for modern standards even your compact sedans today which uh have a bigger engine like probably like golf gti is definitely way faster than this car but for a large large sedan this car is just really hard to beat when it comes to the refinement that you get with naturally aspirated big v8 engines over bumps and potholes this car is incredibly comfy now these seats unlike newer seats they're incredibly uh soft they're not firm at all there is still some sort of back support which is very very weird i don't understand how it can be that soft yet deliver that amount of uh orthopedic comfort 
let's say ergonomics is the right word for it, but that finds a way to deliver everything for you. Now your side mirrors, they are adjustable on the uh, driver's side manually by just moving this knob on the side, while on the passenger side, it is electrically adjustable because Mercedes figured out you can easily just reach here, but you can't reach out the other side. So why would we give you two? Mercedes, the Germans. Now this car is definitely long, like it's incredibly long. It feels longer than a W140, although it, it isn't. And turning radius is uh, it's horrendous. This is a rather wide private road and I still have to reverse just to go around this thing. <laughs> You know the power steering in this car is just incredibly heavy like you know it is assisted but unlike newer cars it's not overly assisted it's not something you can just turn with your pinky it feels very very connected to the road now you don't exactly feel like a sports car you don't exactly feel the road but you get an idea of it you get some vague sense of where your front tires are pointing now handling of course uh Mercedes did zero effort to improve the handling in this car. It is not one big thing that will make you puke, but it's still a land yacht. So if I turn like that, there's a crap ton of body roll, but it's it's manageable. It's not going to make your VIP puke, but that's not the purpose of this car after all. This car is just meant to be driven in a very, very comfortable manner. And should you want to hustle from time to time, it can go. Oh, -ho. now sure, this car uh, started out with uh, 6.9 seconds originally, but today you probably lost some horsepower over the years. You could probably do it in like, based on my judgment, around eight. I'm not gonna time it. That's a bit dangerous in this car. I don't want to crash this car. This is a very, very beautiful example after all. But let's just put it around eight seconds. I think that's a fair number for this car. As you drive this too, you get the sense of. Uh, prestige because you have this incredibly long hood in front of you and the Mercedes-Benz hood star which guides you as you arrive at your destination. The Queen has arrived or the German Kaiser has arrived. Oh, beautiful machine this car. There's just absolutely no modern car that can live up to this in any way possible. Stay tuned for part two of this video where it's time to show you around the armored versions of the W126, starting with the 560 SEL and the 260 SE. I'll put the link up in the description once the video is available. If you like this video, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more car reviews.